All right, everybody, we're going to continue today with uh, our discussion about the Green Revolution. Uh, yesterday, or in the last lecture, I want to just kind of kind of revisit a couple of, of, of concepts that I think are really important uh, that we understand. The first was this uh, this diagram that I showed you, um, you know, showing us this this positive feedback loop, you know, pertaining to to agriculture. Um, and, and I want us to really get a firm grasp on this because it's one of these things that's that's really kind of hard to to kind of solve, you know, for a lot of different reasons. You know, I mean, we, we know that our population you know, is growing, you know, not just in this country, but around the world. You know, we're up to, you know, 7.8 billion people here in 2021, you know, and rising. So you know, we're going to have to get innovative. We're going to have to find ways to produce food uh, and produce more food you know, for everybody to eat. So that's where agricultural productivity comes in. But again, you know, if we do that, if we're producing all this food, obviously we're going to, um, you know, increase lifespans. We're going to, you know, put more food in people's mouths. And, you know, that is going to lead to more population growth, you know, which eventually is going to need, you know, lead to the need for, for more agriculture and more, more innovative ways to produce food. So, I mean, you can look at this any way you want to as being this like never ending loop, you know, that's, that's a positive feedback. I mean, it, this, you know, these two things, you know, you know, both are positively impacting each other. You know, the population growth drives the agriculture and the agriculture drives the population growth. But I, I mean, I guess in, in this particular class, you know, AP Environmental Science, I think one of the big things we have to look at is not so much, you know, slowing down the production of food, but, you know, looking at the impact that all of this agriculture or these agricultural processes, um, you know, takes on our planet or, or, you know, what what kind of role it has on on the earth. So, you know, we, we talked about the green revolution in our, in our last lecture, which is this idea that if we're going to feed everybody, that we're going to need to change our, our agricultural processes, our methods at which we grow food. Uh, yesterday, we talked about two of these, mechanization. You know, again, this idea that we're going to have to have larger farms that are much highly, uh, much more highly mechanized, uh, which is going to use a lot more fossil fuels. And we also talked talk about monocropping, you know, which is this idea that it's much more economically sound for uh, these large farms to only deal with one crop you know, compared to multi-crop farms. All right, now today we're going to take this a step further. We're going to talk about another one of these green revolution uh, techniques, uh, which is called genetically modified organisms, GMOs. Uh, GMOs um, are, are, I think they're, they're, they're kind of misunderstood. I think a lot of people kind of get get GMOs confused with, you know, maybe a couple of other topics. So I want to make sure I clarify and kind of uh, make sure I, I explain to you what a genetically modified organism is. So one thing I want us to kind of understand is that, you know, for, for a long time, you know, farmers, you know, we, we, we've been, been modifying plants forever. You know, uh, we, we, we've talked about artificial selection before or selective breeding, which is the idea that, you know, a farmer or a breeder of plants, or it could be, it could be animals too, like could be dogs, for example. But, you know, here we're talking strictly about plants. Um, but the breeder can, can choose any plants that he wants or she wants that have beneficial traits that they may want to see, you know, over and over again. You know, for example, this picture here, let's say that these are, I don't know, some type of plant and, and the farmer, you know, has a whole crop full of these, but he notices that there's a couple of these plants that grow to be much larger than the other ones do. Well, if he wants another generation of those larger plants, then he's going to choose these to breed. He's not going to choose this smaller one down here, for example, because it's not going to give him the results that he 
that, that, that he might want. So again, you know, choosing or selecting organisms that have specific traits in order to breed them, that is selective breeding or artificial selection. Okay. Now, what I want us to understand is that that's not what GMOs are. I mean, we've been doing that for thousands of years. You know, it's not something that we've been doing relatively recently, uh, which is what GMOs basically are. So let's try to figure out what a GMO is or what a genetically modified organism is. So today we have the technology to, to really manipulate the genome or, or the, the, the DNA of an organism. You know, a GMO is basically when we take the genes or take the DNA from another organism and insert that DNA into the, D, in, into the, the DNA or, or chromosomes of, of, of another. You know, it, I mean, it, it's, it's not quite this simple. Like they take a pair of scissors and you know, cut some DNA. I mean, there's, there's a lot more biology behind that and a lot more chemistry behind that, which we're not going to get into in this class. But we do have the technology to splice genes, to cut DNA, remove it from one organism, and put it into the DNA of another organism. Now, if we do that, you know, the, the idea is that that new organism will be able to produce new traits, you know, produce desirable traits that would otherwise be impossible you know, to obtain through just like normal breeding, like through normal uh, you know, like artificial selection or selective breeding or, or even natural breeding processes. So, I mean, imagine this. I mean, it's, it's literally just taking DNA from another organism and inserting it into the DNA of a new organism and seeing if that will produce specific traits. Now, this has actually happened quite a bit uh, in the agricultural world. Uh, we've been doing this now with plants for years, uh, and we can produce things that are actually quite beneficial. But here's a really good example of this. This is um, called golden rice. You know, we've actually genetically modified rice plants so that they can produce something that they normally don't. Now, the other day, you guys might remember me talking about uh, vitamin A deficiencies. You know, vitamin A deficiencies are, are, are a really big problem, especially in developing countries. You know, I think I mentioned, you know, there's thousands and thousands of kids every year who um, go blind because they lack vitamin A in their diet. So, what we figured out and, and what we're able to do is we're able to take a very uh, cheap crop, you know, rice, which is something that can be grown uh, in a lot of places, especially in the, in the developing world. But rice normally doesn't produce vitamin A. So what they've done is they, they've taken uh, the DNA from another plant. I believe it's like some type of uh, like daffodils or some type of flower. Uh, I believe it's on the next slide, but anyway. Um, they, they, they've taken the DNA from another plant, which produces vitamin A. They've removed that gene and they've inserted it into the rice plant's DNA. And now the rice plants can produce what we call golden rice, which has vitamin A. So it's a real easy way to kind of fix the problem of vitamin A deficiencies around the world if we can just genetically modify like one of our staple crops that we grow around the world. And that way people can have much easier access to obtaining that vitamin A. So it's really revolutionized uh, this problem that we have with vitamin A deficiencies. So it's, in this case, it's a really good thing. Um, here's another uh, example of... Um, genetically modified organisms benefiting um, people. Uh, a good example of this is what we call BT corn. You know, corn, you know, that farmers grow in their crops and it's, it's multiple species of corn. Um, there, there's, a, there's a pest, uh, it's called a bollworm. Now, the bollworm is a very common pest to, to corn crops. Um, and it's something that farmers for years have been trying to control uh, because, again, you know, when these bollworms infest a corn crop, uh, you, look, you, you look at the picture here, these corn, uh, these ears of corn on the left, 
you know, are not infested with bollworms, whereas the ones on the right are. So good luck, good luck selling these these ears of corn to your customers, right? I mean, every ear of corn is like a dollar bill to a farmer, right? So he doesn't want these bollworms infesting his crops. So what we found is that there's a bacteria. It's called Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a big long word. Don't worry about that. But but this particular bacteria um, occurs naturally in the soil. It's a natural soil bacteria. And it, it, it produces a chemical. It produces a toxin that naturally kills bollworms. The problem is, is a lot of this toxin is in the soil and the bollworms live on the plants and, and the toxin can't really get to the bollworms to kill them. So what, what geneticists have figured out is they've actually isolated the gene in the bacteria that produces the toxin. They've removed that gene, they've cut it out, and they've inserted it into the corn plant. So now when you, when you plant your corn seeds, you know, these corn plants will grow and they're already, the corn plants are producing this chemical. They're producing the toxin in their leaves that kills the bollworm. So this has really um, kind of revolutionized the, 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 the corn farming industry. You know, the, this BT corn, it says here over 60% of the corn in the U.S. is BT corn. I think that that, that number is a little outdated. It's probably closer to maybe 80 or maybe even 90%. But I mean, this is what farmers are growing. I mean, why wouldn't they? I mean, why would you not want to grow a corn plant that naturally is going to produce its own toxin to kill these bollworms? You know, by doing that, the farmer doesn't have to spend a lot of money on pesticides. So that's really important because if he didn't have BT corn, he would probably be spending a lot of money every single year uh, on these chemicals that he'll have to spray on his crops to kill the bollworm. So think about that, you know, the repercussions of, of, of using uh, this BT corn. You know, it leads to less pesticide use. So that's less of an expense for the farmer. It's a much larger crop yield. And you know, that means his ears of corn aren't getting eaten. And it's going to eventually lead to, to an economic um, uh, positive, which is, uh, you know, lower food prices for the customer. So, I mean, the more food that he has, you know, the, the, the lower the price he's probably going to have to charge there's going to be a much higher demand. So um, again, that's kind of a success. I mean, here's a few other things here. I just talked about golden rice. Yeah, daffodils. That was what I was thinking of. Um, flavor saver tomatoes. You know, these are tomatoes that have been modified um, you know, with genes from another organism. I believe it's some type of a, of a, of a fruit plant, but I can't remember. Um, but it allows the, the tomato to not spoil as quickly. We've seen tomatoes like this on the right, like over time, they, they kind of spoil, but you know, these genetically modified ones don't. Um, we've even done this with, with, with animals, with fish. You know, we've genetically modified them. Um, you know, we've inserted you know, DNA from other organisms to cause these fish to grow much larger and much faster than what they normally would. You know, so imagine if you're, a, you're an aquaculture, you know, a farmer of fish, and you want your salmon to grow much larger, much faster, um, because it, it produces more money. I mean, we, they've actually done that as well. They've even gone to the lengths of doing things that really you wouldn't think would, would, uh, would, would have much of a purpose. Uh, Glow-in-the-dark animals. Uh, they've actually removed genes from, I believe it was uh, like lightning bugs. Uh, and they've inserted them into other organisms. And they've actually found out that that gene can be turned on uh, and it causes the, the new organism to like glow. I don't remember what organisms they've actually done this to, but you can probably Google it and probably find out. It's kind of an interesting, I guess, experiment, but I don't really know what purpose that actually um, provides. Anyway, um, a few things about GMOs as far as concerns. Um, you know, the GMOs do get a lot of, of negative publicity and a lot of it, I don't know if it's warranted or not. Uh, maybe some of it is. Uh, but there's a lot of concern that consuming GMOs uh, may affect human health. I do know that they've done some, some tests on other animals. And they have found um, some negative um, impacts 
like on mice and things like that, but none of it's really been proven as far as I know um, to affect human health. Um, a lot of it is just kind of hearsay um, and, and, and not a lot of scientific evidence of it. Um, so we don't really have a lot of evidence to support that GMOs uh, are not healthy. Um, there is one, I think, concern that I think is, is kind of important, uh, and that's allergic reactions. You know, for example, on, on some, you know, on, on a lot of the packaging, you know, they, they may say that it's a GMO or maybe it's not a GMO. Um, there are some laws, and they, uh, they, they've been changing a lot recently, and, and, and it kind of is, is up to the states uh, in a lot of cases. There's not really a federal jurisdiction over this, as far as I know, um, that says that you, know, you have to label a product as a GMO or you don't have to label it. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of red tape that, that, that's, that's involved in that. But I, all I know is if I'm eating a GMO, you know, if I'm eating something that's genetically modified, I, I, I kind of want to know what organisms were used to genetically modify. For example, let's say that I have a peanut allergy and I'm eating, I don't know, something that was genetically modified using a peanut plant, you know, DNA or something. You know, that might be something that would be of concern, you know, I would think to the public. Um, so, you know, other than that though, I mean, as far as the health concerns, you know, again, you can kind of Google it and do some research on your own, but there's not a lot of evidence to support that GMOs aren't healthier than you know, regular food. Um, another thing about GMOs that, that I think is fairly concerning is the effects that they have on biodiversity. You know, like when we, when we farm these crops, you know, this picture here, for example, let's say you've got a farmer that's growing, I don't know, let's say BT corn on one side of this field and maybe non-BT BT corn on the other side. So you may have a non-GMO plant here. You may have a GMO plant here. Um, you know, the, 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 these genetically modified organisms, they have DNA that's, you know, not normal, right? It's, it's been genetically altered, these organisms. So what they're seeing is that these GMO plants can actually breed with the non-GMOs. And by doing that, it actually lowers biodiversity of those natural plant species. Um, so one of the things that they've done to help um, kind of solve this, and I don't know how well it works or not, but they create these buffer zones. You know, I don't know if this like whatever six or seven foot area is a big enough buffer zone, but they, they, they try to separate these crops from each other. Separate the GMO crop from the non-GMO crop so there's no cross breeding that's, that's kind of going on. So that is of some concern uh, because it does uh, impact uh, biodiversity, okay? All right, guys, that's it for me for today. There's a couple of assignments on Buzz. Uh, one of them is an article uh, about organic food. I want you to read that. Organic food doesn't mean GMO. They are different things. Uh, the other one is a video uh, about GMO. So watch the video, answer the questions, uh, and I will see you guys soon. All right, take care.